A couple months ago, I had reviewed the excellent Rock Strix X670 EE Gaming, and in my conclusion, I did already voice that the Strix was so good, I had my concern uh, for any need of a hero uh, motherboard in that series. So this review comes with a little bit more scrutiny than usual and um, a serious dose of soul searching. The Strix or the hero, one of them two is a board to many, and our quest today is to find out which one. Fun fact for you, this video is being sponsored by probably the most amazing sponsor in the world, you, maybe. I got a brand new lineup of deliciously tech inspired merch line up. And for the ones who believe that I am too good to be true, well, you can join my channel and have a limitless stock of yumminess me. Seriously, do it. I'm, I'm two days away from opening an uh, OnlyFans page, so please. The Crosshair family is Rock's more premium, uh, versatile and powerful series of motherboards. It doesn't come cheap and last year we saw uh, price soaring with the arrival of the new PCIe 5.0 standard. Hence me being more critic than ever on this type of motherboard. The Hero is its entry level and starts at $700 without taxes. It went down marginally, I think, the past few weeks with the Expo scandal, uh, but yeah, it better be really, really damn unique and good, which when compared to some cheaper alternative seems to be a struggle. Now, starting with the obvious. We are dealing with a very same robust 8 PCB layered ATX motherboard, which we saw introduced on the cheaper Rock Strix E sibling. And it does have heavy consequences on about everything around your motherboard. It means a better VRM heat diffusion, a better PCIe signal insulation, and an overall longer lifespan a fundamental which the hero could not miss. I also like the fact that we have a more compact ATX motherboard instead of a more bulky EATX, which does impose larger housing costs. Design-wise, it remains within the very dark and attractive shade of rug, showing off a refined design process through brushed aluminum and a laser-drawn designs cut crossing through our board componentry. It does underline a single massive and bright, for once, RGB retro screen on the back I.O. featuring different animations and commanding an imposing rug eye on your overall build. As RGB expansion goes, we have four Aura compliant RGB connectors, three of which are addressable. CPU socket wise, the board is rocking AMD first LGA socket, the AM5, featuring no less than 1718 low pressure pins, drastically increasing new generation AMD CPU's bandwidth and allowing the introduction of both PCIe 5 and DDR5 RAM standards. And as I usually note for AM5 uh, CPU sockets, this is the very first generation of Ryzen processors, the 7000 series. And unlike Intel, AMD does have a track record of using uh, their CPU socket for more than two generations. We can see some of them went as far as four uh, a generation of processors. So, interestingly, any X670 based motherboard is usually a good and sound investment in terms of future proofing. Now, VRM wise, well, the Hero X670E joins the ROG X670 Extreme and shows off the most imposing power solution Asus has ever released on the market. We have 22 power stages, 18 of which are 110 amps certified, here only to power the most demanding CPU AMD can come up with. Obviously we are here in the extreme overclocking realm and, and, and this VRM assures us to torque the very last bit of hertz left in your processor. Now, despite all that power debauch, it is only marginally more than its cheaper ROG Strix X670EE sibling, which just feature a very similar 2200 amps VRM, in effect promising very similar CPU-centric performances. Now, to keep this Fusion VRM from creating a black hole in the middle of your room, Asus provided a very premium copper pipe linked 
two stages cooling blocks. The main block shows a nice and particularly thick radiating plate supported by wide walls to store all the heat this block will harvest. Our side block features deep winglets on both of its sides for a larger radiating area, the hole sourced by a wide trunk for heat storage. Both blocks also feature a double contact design providing a direct thermal padded contact to both chokes and power stages for a fast heat diffusion. Results are not surprising and do push things to the limit. With a severely overclocked R9 7900X, our blocks barely went beyond 50 degrees Celsius, which promises a minimal heat strain on our circuit, hence a reliable stability and a prolonged port lifespan. An A++++ plus VRM, obviously. Um, I cannot imagine this board being paired with anything else but a, a higher tier R9 processor. Anything else would be a, you know, a waste of money, waste of your money. So yeah, memory wise, our X670 He Hero supports 128GB of DDR5 RAM organized in a dual channel configuration and overclockable up to a very conservative 6.2. 8 gigahertz. Worth noting, these are slower clocks that you'll find on Intel powered motherboards for equivalent generations, but that's uh, more reflection of the AMD processor uh, DDR5 uh, limitation more than the, pro than, than the motherboard itself. Nevertheless, it remains much faster than what we've seen on its predecessor. Memory intensive tasks will most benefit from the DDR5 upgraded bandwidth and clock, so definitely a plus for content creators. Last but not least, you have to make sure to install this board latest BIOS the 1415 before trying to turn on the RAM uh, Expo profile because failure to do so will result maybe in a, a, well, a kabooming all around and you can check the video uh, I made uh, about that topic a couple days ago which is absolutely eye-opening on Asus uh, and the industry in general. Now, staying in the memory, the board supports up to five M.2 solid state drives, four on board and one via the PCIe 5.0 M.2 expansion card. That expansion card, as well as its two M.2 solid state drive connectors, are all PCIe 5.0 compliant, meaning that they can all swap data up to 128 gigabit per second individually. Our two remaining M.2 solid state drive slots runs four lanes at PCIe 4.0 standard, which translates in a still plenty fast 64 gigabit per second worth of data swap. And all that bandwidth does translate in a lot, and I mean a lot of heat. And that is why Asus has equipped our board with long and thick, very thick thermal padded heat shields. Our first CPU connected stick received most of the focus with a board based thermal pad to provide a double side thermal contact, the all mounted by a ludicrous three level heat shield which could easily knock unconscious an elephant if thrown at it. Obviously, um, a bit overkill, in my opinion, but apart from keeping your stick chill as a Serbian for the rest of its life, it kind, I admit, looks cool, which which has been a trend this, this season. Uh, uh, Rog really likes to put like, over the top uh, heat shields and little light like, tubing. Last but not least, I want to know that all of our sticks come equipped with Asus very own screwless mechanism, which I believe remains the simplest, most sturdy M.2 locking mechanism on the market thus far. Overall, uh, probably the most advanced M.2 solid state drive um, solution I've seen on the market thus far. That's great on paper, but that's also very, very close to what I've seen on the Rockstrix X670 he he, uh, gaming Wi-Fi. The only noticeable difference here is that we have this expansion card, which will occupy a PCIe slot for no other good reason than, you know, being here and Asus trying to push a, a very high price motherboard with a fancy looking accessory, in my opinion. Talking about storage, I need to mention our usual SATA 3 presents, showing six of them now. Uh, here to cater to our legacy drives. Now, 
expansion wise. We have two 16 slots with different speeds and a bachelor slot. As usual, only the CPU linked one gets a full 16 PCI lanes treatment, therefore this is where you want to place your GPU for optimal performances and because the Hero is a proud dual GPU support motherboard, we do have two metallic reinforcements on both of our 16 slots. In a single GPU configuration, it can run up to a very fast PCIe 5.0 fueled 64 gigabyte per second worth of bandwidth and in a dual GPU configuration, our two first 16 slots share lanes in an 8x8 ratio at PCIe 5.0 standard, which translates in a 32 by 32 gigabyte per second worth of data swap individually, which is noticeably more than the 8x4 ratio we saw on the Strix E last month, one of the very few real improvements we can notice going from the Strix to the hero. Our last bachelor slot runs one lane at PCIe 4 standard, meaning only two gigabyte per second worth of bandwidth, great for capture cards. Now, let's not forget to mention that Asus has equipped our first GPU slot with its PCIe unlocking mechanism it introduced last year. Probably the best one in the industry so far. Overall, while the hero takes full advantage of the PCIe 5.0 standard and does an excellent job in the dual GPU, side of things. I really have nothing to re-say really here and Asus did well a pretty good job here so yeah kudos to, to, to Asus for this on, on this board. Now back IO wise. First let me note the presence of our integrated back IO always reassuring and starting from the left our clear large and backlitted CMOS and flashback buttons which I am very happy to see here. We have our HDMI output for integrated graphics, two USB 4.0 Type-C plugs, proper 4.0 which can spew up to 40 gigabit per second each or display from your internal CPU graphics. So basically you can run up to three screens out of your back IO. Not that I would advise it, but you can. 10 USB 3.2 generation, all able to transfer data up to 10 gigabit per second, except this one, which is a dual channel type C, therefore able to transfer up to a whooping 20 gigabit per second. And I do have to upload the initiative that Ace has shown uh, on the back IO by removing any other kind of USB uh, standard. We have only 3.2s and higher and that really adds a bunch of premium to this motherboard compared to the rest of its competition. Next we have our 2.5 gigabit surge protected LAN which uh, um, in contrast to what I just said about the USB plugs seems to be a little light uh, in, in terms of you know of standard in terms of of what could be on this board at that pricing. An Aquentia at least, a five gigabit plug would have been very welcomed here. Next, we have our dual band Wi-Fi 6E, able to transmit in the much cleaner and faster six gigahertz radio spectrum. And finally, our premium 7.1 channel Realtek 4082 ALC codec, serviced by an adequate 550 microfarads worth of capacitors, which is among the best integrated audio you can hope for. No WiMAC capacitors, but the ES 9218 quad DAC does superbly at rendering the bass, but most importantly will do a studio graded job at recording as well, especially great for streamers. Overall, a stunning back IO uh, in terms of bandwidth availability and versatility. We're talking about 195 gigabit per second worth of data, you know, uh, evacuating your board potentially uh, at command of your fingers and, and that's great. Particularly happy about the USB 4 being present, a new standard which will bring us plenty of premium without going through the more expensive Thunderbolt standard. So uh, again, well done to Asus for this. Now, chipset wise, our hero is powered by AMD brand new X670E chipset. It comes in a two 7 watts Prom 21 chips, which have been placed at opposite end of the board to avoid heat bleeding. In effect, we no longer need an active cooling solution as seen on its X570 predecessor. Instead, we do have this very long and thick low profile heat plate, which is not only good looking, but great at radiating the widespread heat away keeping temps way below 50 degrees Celsius, which again shows that ROG has about the best temps uh, I've seen on X670E powered boards. On the inside, we have a bunch of PCIe lanes going in three different PCIe standard direction, but what really set apart the X670E chipset is that it can utilize all of the 20 PCIe 5.0 lanes from the CPU and allowing a much broader PCIe 5.0 support than on its preceding models. Now, front panel connector-wise, well, apart from our usual three second-generation USB connectors, 
and our two 5 gigabit front panel connector, we have a dual channel type C able to transfer up to a very premium 20 gigabit per second and fast charge up to 65 watts your phone. Cooling wise, we do have a few things to unpack here. We have eight connectors, six for PWM fans, more than enough to entertain the most demanding air cooling build, but we also have two water cooling connectors, one all-in-one water cooling connector conveniently placed next to the CPU socket and a D5 water pump header. We also have an in and out water temperature sensors, as well as a water flow sensor. Everything you would need to operate the most complex and demanding dual loop custom water cooling solution in existence. Finally, we do have a LN2 switch in case you woke up one morning and wanted to do a liquid nitrogen build. A very complete cooling menu, if I may say it that way but again, which we usually find uh, on the more refined and agile and expensive Crosshair lineup. Finally, troubleshooting wise, we are in ROG Crosshair territories and it shows. Starting with our first aid easy debugger here to signal the main stage of our boots and providing a quick troubleshoot feel of your system. But most importantly, we have our Q error screen, which will refine our troubleshooting experience to the very reason why your thing refuses to work. It also turns into a very useful CPU temp monitor once the boot is complete. Next, we have our nice fat backlitted power and programmable reset buttons, as well as our retry button for a safer boot. I also want to mention the Alt PCIe mod switch, which drops the entire board signaling to PCIe 4.0 standard, especially useful for PCIe razors, which are are not totally PCIe 5 compliant. Overall, a rather complete troubleshooting solution, but nothing surprising. And in par with, uh, well, the pricing of, of this motherboard, really. In conclusion, at anywhere between 650 to 700 bucks, the ROG Crosshair X670 Hero is an expensive, big, nice premium board, which does honor uh, to the ROG engineering team. Wouldn't it be nice if it just ended like that? Oasis, don't you wish so? Truth is, this board is simply too close to the Rock Strix X670 <laughs> gaming Wi-Fi, in specs, in, in premium, in everything. It's almost a twin. There are a few things like a better dual GPU support, a better... I said a more complete cooling solution and stuff like that, but not enough to account for $200 plus uh, a gap in pricing. This is a beautiful example of what um, uh, marketing cannibalism looks like. Two nearly identical product competing in the very same market segment. And if the euro remains at $650 plus, well, my best advice to you is do not waste your time with it and most importantly, your money. Hard, hard truth.